This is part two of the Brick and Coop. In the last video, we scavenged materials and built the foundation. And in this video, we're going to start laying the first bricks. All right, so I'm gonna to try to mark out my corner bricks. 82 and a half. I'm gonna use a crayon. distance going this way and this is my distance going this way so this right here and look that pencil comes right off that right there should be my corner I know y'all just find this so fascinating just so fascinating just go with this permanent marker so this is gonna be my official corner right here Now I'll measure down just to double check. Now let's pull a chalk line to the other side. Now we'll snap a line between that mark and that mark. Since these corners have less chicken poop on them, we'll try to make a 90 here on one of these corners. And then that'll help us with the rest of it. All right, to do this, I'm gonna try to use the three, four, five triangle. If this side's four feet long and this side's three feet long, then the hypotenuse between them should be five feet long. So we'll make a mark over here at three feet, wherever that is. And then we'll make a mark on that line at four feet. And then we'll measure five feet and wherever the five feet and the three feet cross we'll make a dot and then we'll pull a line through there and that should make that a 90 degree corner then to make our other 90 degree corners all we have to do is make sure our measurement from both of these sides is equal we don't actually have to do 90s over there but then we can verify them by measuring the diagonals and if the diagonals to each corner are the same we'll know all the corners are 90 degrees Right here. All right. Now let's do our forefoot. What we're going to do is measure from the same corner. So if I use this corner of the tape measure right here, when I get down here to my five, I'm going to use this corner as well. So you can't go from this corner to this corner or vice versa. You got to use the same edge. You can see the corner of the tape measure is lined up exactly where those two marks cross. See where this corner of the 60 is? And there's our three foot line right there. And we are still on the edge of our tape over there. So now those marks should be 90 degrees out of that corner. Okay, now this right here should be a 90 degree corner. Or 94 and 3 eighths. See what we look like on this side. Quarter-ish. Oh man. We are bang on. So let's make them permanent with permanent marker. Alright, so these are where we're going to set up our bricks, our brick corners. Start off with a nice square structure. Oh wait, we need a mark for our door. That's where our door is going to start there.
It's been about two weeks since I've worked on this and the chickens are growing fast. They've already outgrown the uh, original chicken we had out here who was a smaller variety. And they're all sleeping in this thing every night and they are crammed in there. So I gotta knock this thing out. First, let's lay out our brick on the footing itself so we can see that it's all gonna fit like we want it. Well, these bricks over here have apparently become a haven for camel crickets. Yeesh. So what I'm doing is leaving these here as a reference. This is the little mock-up I did in the grass while I do the actual layout on the footing. At the moment, I don't care if these are lined up exactly in a straight row. I just want to make sure they're spaced evenly. Now I have the actual footing and bricks set up roughly like the little demo out here, prototype. You can see right here, that's where my door will be. There's my door mark and the other door mark. Now because I'm going to have to take all these bricks up to actually spread mortar and all, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to make some tick marks where the edges of the bricks are so that as I set them off to the side for the mortar, I'll know exactly where I need to put them to get my nice even spacing. And you can see I'm putting the marks far enough away from where the bricks are actually going to be laid so that when I actually put the mortar down, it won't cover up my lines. So now I'm going to lay all the bricks to the side. Before I actually start mixing mortar, I'm going to make sure I have all my tools ready. First of all, I've got a really straight board. Found this on the side of the road when I was walking the dog through the neighborhood, believe it or not. I guess somebody had excess and they just set it out on the curb. Now I have a lot more tools here than I'm probably going to use and first of all I've got this level. Now this was like a hand-me-down level. I've never even used it before but I did test it. You know you can set it on a surface in all directions and make sure the bubble reads the same and then you know that the level is good. Just cheap plastic since it's going to get nasty and dirty. As long as it reads level that's all that matters. I have a drilling hammer, brick set, a bricklayer's rule, a lot of this you're not going to need, and most of it I'm probably not going to use. Got a tape measure, might not even need that, we'll see. These are, they're like corner blocks that hold the string. We'll wrap some string through here and we'll pull it and hook these on both sides of the bricks and this is actually what's going to give us our straight string lines. There are other ways to do that. Line twigs, you can run your line through there and set a brick on top of it and it holds your line nice and steady wherever you want it. I've never used them before, so we'll see how that goes. I got a few different trowels. Some of these are hand-me-downs. They're actually a lot of auction finds and stuff. Some I did buy. I bought this Husky trowel to do another brick project. If you saw my adding a window to a brick house, I bought this just for that video. And then I inherited some of these, which actually came from an auction, and they were covered in rust, and I just ran them through a wire brush on the grinder and sprayed them with some WD-40. I think I'll use this and this, but for the type of brick laying we're doing, which isn't going to take big giant rows of mortar, probably a little pointing trowel like this would work just fine. And truth be told, people have been doing masonry for thousands of years and you can probably do all of this with say a big spoon and an old butter knife. But I happen to have the tools so we're going to use them. A brush to keep our bricks clean. It's just called a quickie bench brush. I want to say I found it in a pile of trash somewhere. I think that's what it was. And some string. This is probably the most important part. Now let me just quickly explain what I have the board for. This is an eight foot board and I think it will span diagonally across the coop. So it's basically just an extension for my level so that we can check to make sure the entire coop is level just by using this cheap plastic level. I know it doesn't look level, but it is. So what this gives me the ability to do is actually lay a brick 
in each corner. Once the corner bricks are level, the rest we do with a string. Now, let's make some mortar. Not a root. And I'm gonna mix the mortar in this mixing pan and actually work out of it, not off a mortar board. I'll start by adding a little water to the pan. Now I'm gonna start on the dry side because you don't want mortar to be too runny or your bricks will just... I'm a DIYer, not a pro. That just makes sense to me. I'm just gonna set up my corner bricks to start with. I think that'll be good. Lay a little bit of mortar down there. I'm gonna line it up with my line on both sides over here. I'm just gonna cut this mortar away, just like that. Scoop it up, put it back in my pan. And now I'm gonna use this masonry ruler here, and but I'm not going to any detail on it. I'm just gonna show you the basics of how it works. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to lay everything on this six. So if I unfold this whole thing, everywhere there's a six, six there, six there, and so on, that should be the top of my brick after it's sitting in a bed of mortar. So I really need to come back over here and make sure this is at the six, and it's not. It's a little high. Wiggle it down. The mortar is already kind of drying out. The masonry sucks the water out of it, and as soon as it does that, it makes it not as flexible. But that's okay, because what we can do is on our first course, it can have a larger mortar bed. We're going to keep working our mortar between so it doesn't get any dry spots. It nice and creamy. Just making kind of a thick bed and roughly the shape of the brick. And it's good to lay more mortar than you need, then press it down and cut it away. Grab a brick, line it up with my corner lines. So I've got a line over here and I've got a line over here. Press it down. Now I can't see this line very good over here, so I'm going to go ahead and, and cut the mortar away on this side. There's my line right there. And the reason you cut mortar away instead of scraping it away is because if you scrape it, you'll actually smear mortar all over the brick and it'll be ugly and very hard to clean. But if you cut it, you cut it like this, you can cut it like this, it keeps it from getting your brick dirty. Now, I'm not going to level that the same way. We're going to throw the level across both of these. Uh, I try to do this quick before draws all the moisture out of that. I don't really have to worry about this corner moving too much since it's already kind of drying out. Wow, that is already bang on right there. While that level is on there, and I know that's level across the top of that, I'm just going to make sure that the brick is flat to this and not sticking up on any of the sides. Then I'll know it's level at least this way. And I can do that by just gently tapping on the board. Since I'm level that way, I'll just make sure I'm level this way. Here we are. Cut that mortar away. Here we go. That's brick number two. See my line right there. I'll try to keep it lined up with that. And where is it this way? Oh, gotta come back. Right there. Go ahead and cut some of this excess off. 
going to level it with the original brick. That would be a better reference if they're all leveled off the original brick. So you can see the bubble. So I'll just make sure the brick itself is level. It's a little high on this side. Oh no, these bricks are supposed to be running this way. Gotta go back and fix that. I'm gonna add just a touch more water to this. I'd like to have a European trowel, a Belgian trowel. This guy named Jay, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but maybe I'll throw it up there on the screen. He is a really good builder in Belgium, and he has this really cool trowel that I would like to try out and it would work better with a, a bucket type situation. These are meant to be used on just totally flat surfaces like a square of OSB or something like that. So it's hard to get in the corners of a concrete mixing pan like this. Line it up with my corners. Now back to this corner. I know if you're a real bricklayer out there, you're just laughing your butt off at this. Now I'm going to go back and level again to my original brick. still go down a little over here. So I'm going to put this right in the middle to try to level this whole brick at one time. I'll get that off of them. Come down on this side. And now, we'll lay the bricks that are in the doorway. So our brick should be flush with this and running parallel with that. All right, I'm not gonna level that just yet. I'm gonna really quickly do my other one. going to kind of vibrate this with my hand and try to feel for level. I can see I'm, I'm higher than this over here so I can already go ahead and start leveling off of this brick. This is what a margin trowel is good for. Now let's get on this brick if it's not too hard and go all the way across and bring this brick down. You can see how there's a gap over here. We're going to bring that down until it closes up that gap. Now we know all those bricks on the front line are nice and level. One more tool I forgot to mention is a jointer. So this is how we'll smooth the joints, which actually helps seal them against water and makes them look a little neater. Starting with the first brick I laid because it's going to be the hardest. So it kind of polishes the surface, makes it slick, which makes it harder for water to be absorbed in it. I'm going to go in from the corners. If I go away from the corners, it'll tend to chip out.
Okay, it's the next day, just after lunch. I left work early to get started on this. I apologize for any background noise. Someone is mowing today and they're actually using an excavator two doors down from me. Thankfully, they've gone to lunch right now. Well, at least the excavator guy has. Our mortar joints have to be I better go get a microphone. Okay, I've switched over to this lapel mic. It's wireless and it's cheap, so I hope it comes through. But I've got someone mowing, someone using a compactor, someone using an excavator, and someone using a bobcat over there. Anyway, so usually these brick rules are used for when you have plans, you have certain heights you've got to hit, you know, window sills. Uh, soffit lines, stuff like that, and you want to make everything match up nicely, you figure out which one of these joints is the best thickness to hit all your marks. Now, I don't have any plans for this, and I don't care how high it is, I just need to build it up high enough to get inside, maybe without ducking my head, but since I'm not the chicken tender, chicken tender, <laughs> my, uh, daughter is and she's topped out at about 5'4". I don't need to go much higher than that so I'm just looking for even joints. So that's all I'm using this brick rule for. There's also lots of other ways you can do this. Maybe easier ways that take longer setup times and that would be putting plumbed what I would call profiles on each of the corners so that it would be like a board that's perfectly straight and you place one at each corner and you would mark on it where you want the tops of each brick to go and then all you have to do is move your strings up on those marks and they're all leveled all the way around all four corners and you can go pretty quick doing that this is so small it would be really difficult to set up profiles like that. I'm just doing this by hand and sort of like the old-fashioned way, except since this is like a basket weave, it's not going to be traditional with built-up corners. I don't know if you can build up corners with this kind of pattern. I'm going to just be running a course at a time and trying to keep it all straight. I'm inexperienced. That's why this is a DIY channel. It's not a professional showing you how to do it yourself. It is a DIYer showing you that you can do it yourself because I can do it myself. I hope I can do this myself. We'll see, won't we? Let's start laying some more bricks. Now, before we start laying, we need to make a straight level line that we can follow. And there are a few ways you can do that. So we can take this little wooden block here. We can run a string through it with a knot. It can be a knot or you can wrap it around a few times, tuck it in there. You fit the string in this groove right here. And what that does is you put it on the edge of your brick and when you pull it tight it stays on there and then you can run it all the way down to your other brick where you'll put another one of those on here and then hook that on there and we'll move it up to the very top edge of the brick so there you see we have a nice taut line running between the two bricks you want to stay just a fraction off that line. Don't touch the line. But before we commit to this, let's look at the other way you can do this. These are called twigs. Show you this up close. I know I showed you before, but your line fits inside that little tube or half tube right there. Give this a little bend. Snap that in place. Pull out some string. Set that on the edge. You can set a brick on top of it. Then wrap it around another brick, set the brick somewhere where it's going to stay tight. All right, then you can see you just offset it a little, however much you need, and you pull that tight. And you can use these in combinations, like I could use this piece way down here. These twigs don't require the tautness to stay up. Now they do require the tautness to keep this line straight, because the tighter this is, the straighter this is. If this line gets slack, then your bricks in the middle will sag. If you use the twig, you want to wrap it around something really tight. And I think I'm actually going to use the, the twig. Get it on the string. And put a brick on top of it. And move it out just a little so I have a little space. I'm going to wrap it around this brick here. 
and drop the brick down here. There we go. So you can see I'm about a sixteenth or so off of the brick and the line is tight so it's not drooping. So now we're ready to start laying to our line as they call it. I got my little pencil marks here where I can see my bricks are supposed to be. I'm just gonna And the cool thing about the line is you get them straight and the same height all at the same time. Looking at my marks here, I got a mark there and a mark there. I'm trying to keep it lined up with those. Now I'm just going to set it and press it. Wiggle it just a little bit until my brick is to that line and about a sixteenth of an inch off. And that looks good. Cut the mortar away. There's no way I'm going to get in there to clean this out with this trowel. So this margin trowel can fit between here. You can cut into it like that. And just get it right out of there. And to be honest, you could probably do this whole project with just a margin trowel. You can actually hold your strings with just bricks and sticks. That's the reason I think they call this a twig because in the old days, Bricklayers used to use a twig instead of these little metal things, and they started calling the metal things a twig, so. My mark here, my mark here. Now at the same time, I should be coming back and making sure we're level this way. So even though I'm not necessarily sticking to this rule, you actually want to wait until your joints are stiff, not dry, just stiff, before you start tooling them because you want them to have a nice polish. It's not like doing concrete where you get the cream. If you, if you do it when they're wet, you'll get a nice cream on them, but then after they dry, you'll see little hairline cracks all in your finish. You actually want to wait until it's pretty stiff so that when you run your jointing tool over them, it, it actually just polishes them and doesn't smear the mortar. When I was tuck pointing some of these that didn't have enough mortar, I did use a wet mix. And really what you're supposed to do, if you can see over here, if you can find some dry bits that are like on the side of your mortar board or something, or some crumbles that have fallen off that have gotten 
not dry, but more stiff. They've had some of the moisture out of them. That's the best stuff to actually tuck in the cracks and, and polish up with. You'll also notice if you use a plastic pan like I'm using, the mortar stays nice and wet and workable for a long period of time. Whereas if you use a board, it starts drawing the moisture out of the mortar and starts getting stiff and you sometimes have to, there's a name they call it, tempering it. You have to temper it with some more water, especially on hot days. The thing about the joints is since these are cement and brick and they're very water thirsty, at least if you haven't soaked them or anything, they draw the water out of the mortar really fast. So it doesn't take long before, see that's already stiff just in the time I'm talking to you, before you can come in here and start polishing them up. That's slightly too wet, but they're pretty close. Now for the second layer.